Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, an ex-step marker and Cambridge mathematician. Today, I wanted to go over some final tips for the step exams. With just one month to go, I wanted to share some evidence-based strategies that actually work, based on both my personal experience and research on effective learning. Now, I remember this feeling all too well. The pressure's mounting, the panic's setting in, and you've got that little voice in your head saying, there's just way too much to learn. But here's the truth about step. You do not need to cover it all. Instead, what you want to do is be methodical, strategic, and focus on just doing the things that actually matter. Before we dive into the specific techniques, I wanted to talk about what my approach is when it came to STEP. So let's get one thing clear about STEP. They're not looking for perfect candidates who've remembered every single technique and every single formula. They're looking for candidates who can think mathematically, logically, can think creatively about maths, and who can communicate these ideas clearly in the exam. In this video, I'm going to give you seven key strategies that I think are really important for this final month when it comes to the STEP exams. So let's get into it. Okay, so strategy one. This is the most high yield activity you can do right now, which is just to complete past paper questions. The more you do, the better. But there is a way that we can do our past paper questions in a way that's more beneficial to us. So instead of just doing them when, when and where you can, set aside three uninterrupted hours and make this not just about completing past paper questions, but getting into the mind frame of, you need to use those three hours effectively, you need to get comfortable with both the pressure and the clock. The reason why we try and do it in three uninterrupted hours is because what a lot of students miss is that you don't need to complete all the questions. It's not like A-level where you have to do every single question. Here, we just want six questions maximum. In fact, you don't really need six full questions. What would be better is four full questions and then two partials. But what we want is quality over quantity. Doing more than six questions is pointless because you don't get marks for any of those extra questions. So what we want to do is pick our questions wisely. You want to pick questions you know you're going to be good at and be able to do most of the question. Now, if you need any help with picking those questions, I've got a video that should be linked above. And so we just want to get you doing more and more questions. The more papers that you've done, the more different types of questions you're going to have seen, and you'll start to see patterns in those questions, and it can really help you in the exam. Okay, so this strategy is one that I used extensively in my own revision, not just for step, but for all my other subjects. I create what I call a book of tricks. It's an extensive list of any roadblock I hit in a question or any trick that a question used that I didn't see at the time. And this helps me both if I come to repeat that question, I should know it next time, or if I see a similar question in a future paper where I can use that same trick. Now the aim here isn't just to write down when you made an algebra mistake, that's just a little mistake, it doesn't matter in the end of the day. What we want to write down is any trick that stopped us from finishing the question. And by keeping this log, we have it for next time. Whenever similar questions come up, we should be able to go, aha, I can use that. Now to do this, you want to be specific. You don't just want to write integration error, and it's not going to help you. What you want to write down is something along the lines of, for example, we can create a recurrence relation for an integral of x to the power n sine x by using integration by parts. It's specific enough that if a question similar comes up, I can use that. So say x to the n cos x. I can use what I learned from that question to apply to this new question. These precise notes become really valuable when it comes to revising, because you've got all your tricks written down on one or two pages that you can go into the exam and think, oh, I know all these tricks now and I can apply them if they come up. Now you want to review this log every like two to three days, or if it's only a short log, probably once a week. But what you going to do is start to notice any patterns that come up. Are you hitting the same roadblock every time? If so, you want to start and be revising that subject so that you understand why you're getting stuck and how you can use that trick to move on. This log will show you exactly where you're losing your marks and how you can improve for future questions. Right, so if you followed strategy one and strategy two, you've now done a load of questions and you made a load of mistakes and then you've jotted down all the tricks that made it difficult in those questions. Brilliant work. Now here's the next game changer. Collect all those questions that you had and bring them all together in one paper. Call it the super paper that targets all your weaknesses or paper of errors. It's gonna be one of the most painful papers of your life because it's all the most difficult questions, but it's a paper that's gonna make sure that you've remembered all those tricks. You wanna work through them back to back and be brutally honest with yourself. Did you fully understand this question or does it still trip you up? And for those stubborn problems that you're still getting wrong, don't stress, just add them to your next paper of errors that you do a week later, until you get that aha moment and the question finally clicks. Trust me when I say that this targeted practice on your weaknesses is incredibly important 
and will really boost your exam performance when it comes to the step exams. Okay, so on to time management. The step exam is nearly as much about time management as it is mathematical ability. Sorry to say. Here's the framework I recommend. It starts with five minutes of just reading through the questions and making sure you're picking the right ones. This is incredibly important. Please don't just start by doing question one. Make sure you're picking out the right questions for you. And then try and spend 30 to 35 minutes per question and then leave about 15 minutes at the end just so you can reread through all of your questions. Make sure you've answered the question that they've actually asked. And here's the difficult truth. You need to be ruthless. If you're spending more than 30 minutes on a question, just move on to the next one. If you get chance, circle back. Sometimes moving on to a different question can help you with the original question. The aim here is four full questions. Not two full and two halves, but four full questions and potentially a partial fifth and a partial sixth if you get time. Now this strategy is not for everyone, but it's one that I kind of think is quite useful when it comes to actually performing in the exam, which is don't fall into the trap of having a theme day. What I mean by that is, oh, today's all about integration, tomorrow I'll focus on mechanics. Your brain doesn't work optimally that way. You need to be able to be more flexible and be able to switch between topics quickly because realistically in the exam, you have to be going from uh, pure to mechanics or to statistics pretty quickly because you need to do them all within those three hours. So I recommend rotating through different topics as you're advising. This builds cognitive flexibility and mimics more what the exam is gonna be like and allows you to switch between topics pretty quick. Now, it's up to you how you actually implement this. A good structure might be spend 45 minutes on topic one, 45 minutes on topic two, and 45 minutes on topic three, and have a little bit of a break in between each. So at this stage, you don't have enough time to learn everything from scratch. But what you should do is have the basics down to a T so that if you need to apply them in the exam, you don't need to worry about what formula you're using or, or have I done that quite right. And instead you can just focus on the harder, more conceptual parts of the question. So when I say the basics, what I mean is for say differentiation, it would be like the product rule, chain rule, implicit differentiation. Integration would be integration by substitution, by parts or using partial fractions. For things like proof, it wants to be contradiction, induction, or just direct proof. For differential equations, it wants to be separation of variables, integrating factors for both first and second order differentials. For statistics, you might want to think about hypothesis testing, probability distributions, or just probability in general. Mechanics wants to be energy conservation, momentum, circular motion, and the, there's many more, but what you want is the basics down so that if you need to apply a certain formula or a certain concept, you know how to apply it pretty easily. The hard part is just knowing, should I apply it? Should I not apply it? What is my next step? That's the real testing step. They're not really testing, can you apply the formula that you've been taught a hundred times? Strategy seven, pretty similar to strategy one, but it's a little bit different. But whereas strategy one is kind of just doing a lot of questions, a lot of papers. Strategy seven is about the exam conditions. At least once a week, put yourself in the full exam experience. So that's a proper desk, proper timing, proper stationery, no music, no snacks, no distractions. You wanna be building up that exam pressure on yourself. If we can build familiarity with the mental and physical state that you'll be in during the real exam, it will reduce your anxiety and improve your performance in the exam. You'll have done a lot of mock exams at school. It's the same kind of idea. It puts you in that mental state, ready for the real exams. So when the exam day comes, remember these principles. One, start with the question you're most confident in. Two, write something for every question you attempt. The partial marks do add up. Three, when stuck, write down what you know about the problem. This can help you kind of work through what you know to do. Four, draw clear diagrams where you need to. You might get marks for these. Five, show your work clearly. You will get process marks. And perhaps the most important is breathe. <laughs> Trust that you've done enough preparation. Remember that your self-worth isn't determined by this one exam. Cambridge is not the be all and end all. There is plenty of amazing universities. The step exam is challenging, but it's also an opportunity to show off your skills as a mathematician. These last few weeks aren't about cramming in as much revision as you can do. They're about refining your skills, building confidence and developing the mental stamina you need for the exam. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more evidence-based study tips. 
and leave a comment letting me know what step paper you're attempting. I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, happy studying.